Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. It's my annual swap out the drive day. At least that's what I said back in 2020 when I made the video, linked it up there, where I talked about my backup strategy. The, one of the main points in that video was how I don't want to wait till the drive actually fails to replace it. I showed how drives either fail pretty early on or they start failing a few years later. And the problem is the longer you go, the higher the likelihood. So if you've got a raid like I have with four drives running and one of them dies, the odds are the others are not gonna last much longer. So normally what I like to do, or what I said at the time is every other year I would swap out the drives in one of my backup cabinets. And that way I'd never go more than two years. Well, it's been four years and I just, time flies, not paying attention. And the other day when I was doing my carbon copy cloner backup, it reported that my backup one had quite a few errors in it. Uh, Panic City. Now, I thoroughly believe that redundancy is the only correct way to back up. And the main purpose of this video is to not talk about my strategy, but more in general talk about why RAID 5 is not a backup strategy. You should not be trusting it. And there's a couple of reasons, and I'll get into that in a minute. And one of them I just barely learned not too long ago. Anyway, Panic City got on Amazon, ordered some drives, did quite a bit of research where I learned something new about these drives, which is called CMR versus SMR. Had no clue about that, and it's actually a big deal when you're picking the drives you want to use. They got here, got them in, uh, cloned over from backup two back to backup one, and I'm good to go. I'm Everything's back to normal. Other than the fact my backup two drives are now also four years old, I really don't trust them anymore. And so today, the new drives for backup two. Now, I am gonna change one thing in my strategy. I'm actually putting larger drives in backup two. So my backup one has three, 30 ter three 10 terabyte drives. So I have 30 terabytes of storage. This is gonna have three 12 terabyte drives, different brand. Pretty reliable brand. I use Backblaze to kind of look at reliability numbers. So this will have six terabytes more than the other one. Now, one nice thing about Carbon Copy Cloner is if you delete a file from one of your systems, when you back it up, it doesn't delete it. It just moves it into a folder. And you can say, okay, when I get to only one terabyte of space left, start clearing out some of that older data. I might go six months or even a year before I'm clearing any of that. And there have been rare occasions where I want to go back and retrieve something. Now, I've just been signed up for Backblaze, and I'll do another video about that, which gives me that possibility as well. But I kind of like that strategy. So I have my new drives up and running. Everything's all backed up again. You know, even my Backblaze upload, which turned out to be 24 terabytes of data, is finished. So no more moving hard drives back and forth from my daughter's house every couple of weeks, which was my off location strategy before. You know, gigabit fiber is a game changer for online storage and backup, and even for using it for working data. But the reason I decided to do this video was because it seemed like a decent follow-up to that video I showed you earlier. You know, I didn't follow my own advice and my own plan as well as I should have. Fortunately, I managed to survive without hard drives failing without too much concern. You know, and I think I did a decent job talking about different backup strategies in that video, including the importance of your backup strategy being built on independent, redundant copies. Also about different RAID systems and what they're designed for. But in the process of researching what drives to use for my replacements, I learned something I wasn't aware of before. Now it's been around for a while, but it has some serious ramifications of using certain drives in a RAID 5 and it's pretty significant and it's only recently come to light. I thought I might also go into a little more detail as to why RAID 5 and RAID 6 as a backup strategy is pretty risky. Before going any further, understand this video is not intended for tech savvy IT types. None of this should be new to you. But if you're not sure what I'm talking about and if you depend on a RAID 5 or RAID 6 NAS for your working data and your data storage, this might be informative. You know, I've been to many trade shows where photographers find a booth with a snazzy new NAS vendor touting the advantages of NAS, and there are many which are great. But then the salesman often starts talking about how the built-in RAID 5 firmware of the NAS keeps your data safe. I can only assume there are some who have been running a RAID 5 NAS system, such as Drobo, feeling their data was safe and secure and really don't have any other backup in place. 
So if you're running a RAID 5 with the idea that you can just swap out a drive as they die, well, maybe I can set a little light, a little insight. And this is coming from a guy who's not an IT guy, career guy. I'm a photographer, but I've been deeply involved in computing and systems since the 80s. First, I guess we should define what our goal is when developing a backup strategy. And to me, a good backup strategy provides two things. First, it offers some means to go back in time to replace a file that was corrupted or maybe we made some changes and we want to revert to an older copy. And that's a useful thing. And systems like Time Machine are pretty good at that, specifically designed for that. But second, we need a way to recover 100% of our data in case of a catastrophic problem. Total hard drive failure, building burns down, someone comes in and steals everything. You can kind of see where I'm going, catastrophic. In this case, there is only one acceptable result and that there is a 0% chance that our backup strategy will fail and we will lose some or all of our data. Zero, nothing else is acceptable. That's not an unreasonable goal. In my case, three redundant backup systems I mean I have four copies on four different devices of my working data, three copies of my archive data, and one of those is on a reliable cloud service. Now, there's no guarantee this is a 100% safe solution or safe option, but it's hard to imagine a scenario where I can't get my data back. And notice, nothing I do depends on a RAID strategy with a disk rebuild in case of failure. So first, let's talk about the tech used to make the drives and how recently it's come to light that some drives are just terrible for a RAID. You know, most backup solutions involve standard hard disk drives. They're cheaper, speed isn't really important, and they hold a lot more data. Now, drives use one of two technologies in the way their platters are made and used. One is called shingled magnetic recording, SMR, and the other is called conventional magnetic recording. Shingle recording can make drives a little cheaper, a little more affordable. They're fairly common on consumer drives. The problem is they slow down the write speed significantly. Not to get into too much more detail on a RAID 5, if you replace a drive with one using SMR, it can take 13 to 15 times longer for that process to rebuild. They call it resilvering. And all that extra time makes the process much more vulnerable to a URE or unrecoverable read error change your RAID into a very useless paperweight. Whereas a really good RAID hardware RAID might be able to rebuild a drive in hours or about a day, a SMR drive could take nine days or longer to rebuild. And if anything goes wrong with any of the other drives in that process, the whole RAID's toast. Now, some drive manufacturers didn't specify which tech they were using in their drives. This became pretty problematic for Western Digital, who was hit with a class action lawsuit, which they either lost or settled. And since then, it's pretty easy to do a little digging and find out which tech the drive is using. If you buy a pre-built RAID, this means you need to find out from the vendor what drives are they putting in their RAID cabinet. Make sure they are CMR drives and not SMR drives. Personally, I'll never buy a CMR or an SMR drive again for anything. It just doesn't seem as reliable and it's not really worth a little bit of money that you save. The challenge with rebuilding a RAID is that there is so much data being exchanged, the likelihood of a URE goes way up. From the point of view of the drives, it's not surprising. You know, you buy a new NAS with RAID 5, get it up and running, and a few years later, one of the drive fails. At some point in a time, a drive will get enough URE's to basically be dead. Now, I know the odds of a URE seem pretty high. You know, the drive manufacturers listed as something like 10 to the 14th power less than 10 to the 14th power. That's one in a trillion. Since that means less than, it stands the reason you're pretty safe until you hit that number. Once you pass it, the odds begin to increase. If I say the odds of a particular action achieving a specific result is less than one in 10, then it's not too surprising if we perform the action 10 times and we don't get the result. But if we continue to repeat it, say 20 or 30 times, well, it's also not surprising that we do get the result. So it might not be too surprising that our hard drive goes well past 100 trillion read operations before it might hit a URE, but it also isn't too surprising that surpassing that number by quite a bit also did actually find the drive unrecoverable with multiple read errors. The problem is at some point the drive can no longer recover from read errors with its checksums and sector mapping and other technologies. 
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. A hundred trillion sounds like a huge number. But when you consider that a 10 terabyte drive holds over 10 trillion bytes of data, moving around a lot of data can result in a lot of read operations. Now, I know that it doesn't take anywhere near one read operation per byte. But as the drive gets used, it's pretty easy to see that after a few years, moving past that 100 trillion number isn't really surprising. Now, as I said before, just because we move past it, it doesn't mean it's going to die. But physical factors play a role as well. How many hours has it been spinning? How hot is the cabinet? How often has it been turned off and on? How many drives are in the cabinet, which cause vibration issues and make the drives work a little harder? So bottom line, let's suppose you just had a drive die and the other drives are probably the same brand and size installed at the same time and have just as many hours and as much stress as the one that died. You swap out the dead drive with a new drive and then ask the RAID to churn and rebuild terabytes of data, which will take hours or days. Odds are pretty good one of those other drives is going to have problems. Now here's an overly simplified RAID calculator which really doesn't take into account nearly enough information like some of the others do, but it's pretty basic, but it kind of demonstrates the problem pretty well. So in the first example, we have a RAID with four eight terabyte drives, typical unrecoverable read error rate. It says the chance of success is only 15%. Uh, that's pretty extreme. If we drop that down to four terabyte drives, it goes up quite a bit, but it's still only 38%. Now, even if the drive is 10 to the 15th power, you're going to have likelihood of failures greater than 10% on these things. I learned this lesson the hard way, depending on a RAID 5 many years ago, and when it came time to swap out a bad drive, after thrashing for quite a while, it was pretty apparent the entire process had failed. I let that thing run for a couple of weeks just to be sure, but at that point it was obvious something went wrong and I lost a lot of data. So it's not terrible to depend on a RAID 5 and hope that the drive swap works, but it's not a backup strategy. It's definitely not something you should depend on to keep your data safe. You might be asking yourself, well, why is that? Why isn't it more dependable? Well, RAID 5 was invented in the mid 80s and a typical hard drive in the mid 80s was a 10 or 20 megabyte drive, not even gigabyte. We're talking megabyte. The first drive I built for my Mac Plus and for my CPM systems, which was back, the CPM system I built the hard drive in, uh, I believe it was around 83, and I built a hard drive that had 10 megabytes of storage, same size as a current hard drive. It's called a half height drive. Now the Mac Plus, I built a 20 megabyte drive and it also a half height drive. And when you're talking about that small amount of data, then RAID 5 works. The smaller your drives, the higher the likelihood it's not gonna fail during a rebuild. <laughs> well, we've gone way, way past that. And I think most big, you know, cloud services, they're using th something like triple or quadruple redundancy. So they can have as many as four drives die in the process. Uh, you know, their hardware is really, really good and they can rebuild drives really fast with the least amount of data exchange. But those little cabinets you buy that are just meant for you to have in a little small, you know, mom and pop shop or portrait studio or whatever, uh, they're great for making sure you can get your data all the time but they are definitely not something to depend on as a backup. Now, in your particular workflow, RAID 5 might be useful for its other features, and you certainly should consider it. My case, I don't. My backup cabinets are back here. They come on at night, everything backs up, they shut down. They're strictly for backup. My other drives are all SSDs. I work only off of SSD and working, uh, working files, and they're backed up every night to those backup drives, and then every few days, that backs up to Backblaze. So if you don't need RAID 5 for being able to continue working if a hard drive fails, then you might just try to develop a system which is built on solid, good, redundant backups over multiple uh, systems and devices, one of which is in a different location. And if you have available to you a high enough speed uh, internet that you can upload all your data to a cloud, at least for backup, uh, it's highly recommended. Well, I hope you found this at least informative and useful. I'm not a super expert on this, but I think that possibly 
I know some friends of mine that have had real serious problems and lost data because they thought RAID 5 was a great backup. And I just thought I'd make the video while it was fresh on my mind. Anyway, hopefully be back with a new video pretty quickly about my Backblaze experience, uh, the uploading process and what I think about it. And until then, see ya.